So after solder ring, I have the silver ring. Now what I have to do is go through a lot of sanding papers like this and sand the inside of the ring so it's nice and smooth. There's a lot of repetition in making jewelry. <laughs> Now the fun part. I have already prepared the, the piece that I'm going to put, but I'm going to show you how it looks like when it's not prepared. So I collect all these fun color bottles. Uh, these are the tops. Different colors. So I cut them. I use a lot of sandpapers, different grades of sandpapers to to make it nice and smooth. So now I can use it as a top of the ring. Oh, here we go. In this episode of the Kościuszko Foundation series Artist in a Spotlight, we are visiting the studio of Jovita Allen, a Polish-American jewelry artist from the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Jovita says she started making jewelry and wearable objects as a teenager in communist Poland, in order to look different from the rest of the monochromatic crowd. Over the years, she continued to develop her crafting skills, and once settled in the USA, she attended the George Washington Corcoran School of Art, where she received her formal jewelry training. After many successful years of creating artistic jewelry featuring sterling silver and very semi-precious stones, Jovita started exploring new forms and materials, pushing the limits of what's traditionally considered to be jewelry. Today, she uses alternative materials such as rubber, wood, nylon and recycled plastic to produce short series of one-of-a-kind jewelry pieces. Drawing inspiration from the contemporary urban life and making references to organic forms, she creates modern jewelry that illustrates the aesthetic of sophisticated minimalism. I always was making um, some kind of craft or art. Uh, even when, as a young person in Poland, especially during the times that there were many people, many things that um, that you could buy to look different, I was making my own um, clothing, my own jewelry and other accessories to just to look different than the other people. Uh, so I was knitting, I was crocheting, I was uh, embroidering, beading, <laughs> did a lot of different crafts. Um, so by the time that I came to America, um, I decided to make it my profession because it was always my passion. Um, I uh, finished um, a program at the Corcoran College of Art. Uh, in the jewelry department, where I was learning traditional metal smithing, and um, spent few years on learning how to work with metals, how to work with stone setting, how to make different uh, metal forms. Um, somewhere in this artistic path, I decided to work more and more with um, alternative materials and uh, uh, mostly I concentrated on plastics, uh, especially um, recycle, recycling plastics, which I use in my jewelry um, until now and this is one of my main materials. That and you use a very unusual 
plastic uh, that is made of uh, plastic bottles. Yes, I collect... Can you show exactly what you're using to make your jewelry? <laughs> like the piece that you have on you actually is made of plastic bottles, yes. isn't it? Yes, so I collect plastic bottles and you can see in my studio there are boxes and boxes of plastics um, which I um, then cut into pieces and um, use um, heat to, to shape them. Um, and make jewelry. How, so. how do you come up with uh, these different colors? Do you use paint? Mm, no, actually I do not dye them. I collect bottles in different colors. Very often I have to travel to... I, and when I travel I find interesting bottles uh, in different countries. Poland is a huge resource of my materials because Polish bottles are very colorful in, and and interesting. So every time I go to Poland, I bring some plastics uh, <laughs> and then then work with them uh, here in my studio. Uh, my designing process usually starts from the material. So mm -hmm. I find an interesting material. Is it a bottle or is it some some other alternative material that I use like rubber or or other other things like mm -hmm. acrylics mm -hmm. and I um, I just look at it and try to imagine what how it could look in a different form so definitely the material has to inspire me and this is the base from from which I come with the design mm -hmm. <laughs> hardware stores are one of my favorite places in the world <laughs> because there's always something interesting that I can find there. Mm -hmm. And very often I use some um, materials that are, that are usually uh, used for construction that I can um, translate them into my jewelry pieces. So just like these ones which are made out of window sealer and that was the, the series that um, that was called Entangled. Um, it, I had some necklaces and earrings and, mm -hmm. and bro brooches. So these are made out of expand expandable foam, and this is another material that you use in con construction. And this one I added the color, and my this one is for mm -hmm. example recycled plastic at the back. Mm -hmm. They seem like they are in a more organic forms than the other ones. Uh, is it a happy accident? Uh, do you like playing with materials and seeing what can come out of them? Well, it is funny that you said so because usually I think that my pieces are very uh, sculptural, even architectural, you know, and um, although um, Nature itself is not my main inspiration. Well, sometimes, uh, you know, nature nature also has its um, the <laughs> structure. So even those pieces, you can say that they are organic, even if they are very, very, um, well, it's like structured and built. Um, I like layers. So there is a lot of pieces that there is there are layers where you can see different textures. Texture itself is important for me. Also, um, I like pieces that can change uh, while wearing them. So, for example, the bracelet, which is kinetic. Um, so that's. That's what I, I use a lot in my, in my design. And I notice you like large forms. This is unusual, the necklace that you have on, on you is a really <laughs> large size. Uh, I make jewelry that is visible. Mm -hmm. I want women to be visible. And I want... Uh, I mean, I don't want to say that I'm using women as as models for for big models for my my little sculptures, but but I think jewelry 
is um, is uh, something that can um, can show your mood, can show your uh, your character. So that is why I want women to be visible, and I make jewelry that is visible. I also think that. My jewelry has a sense of humor. <laughs> it's a certain sense of humor, which is uh, important because it's also nice when people smile at you when you wear it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I want this effect. So mm -hmm. um, I want the effect of of uh, visibility, but also um, showing something unusual. Mm -hmm. and Treating jewelry as a form of art as like you mentioned a wearable sculpture right this is how i see my most of my pieces uh, i think they are uh, they can be displayed on the wall or they can be displayed on on your neck mm -hmm. um, and the large forms that that you're using wouldn't be possible if you were using a more traditional materials right only a very light battles definitely that is why i you know i was looking for materials i always when looking for materials that uh, can uh, be used in larger scale and don't you know and they are still wearable so mm -hmm. they are still pieces of jewelry even if if sometimes they have a bigger scale mm -hmm. These are actually uh, golf balls for, for practicing, so they are made out of foam. So again, they are light, they are not real golf balls, which would be a little uh, difficult to wear. Uh, but speaking about colors, I think that <laughs> one of my inspirations um, during the years was jewelry and colors from Africa. And I, uh, for for many years, I was collecting African trail beads, uh, and I always liked these beautiful, big forms and and colors that that were used in it. So I, I'm trying to to translate it into my materials and my aesthetics, my. My Your sensitivity. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is interesting what you're saying because uh, the contemporary African jewelry also uses very often found objects, right? Like uh, piece, pieces of plastic. I, I came across uh, African jewelry items, and they were they were made out of rubber, uh, also used bottles, plastics. This is the beauty of uh, recycling or upcycling that you can actually take any materials that you want and you, um, because of the availability of it, you can, there is room for experimenting and trying to find your own way of using these materials. Um, it's uh, um, when you work with this kind of materials, it's the more you, <laughs> the more you, time you spend with them, the the more ideas come and and it's it's very funny because the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. And the other pieces that are displayed over there are made of which type of bottles? The the orange and and yellow. So this one. Mm -hmm. This one is a funny necklace. It's made actually out of detergent bottles. And like what type of bottles can you can you show? You want to see? Of course. So I have. These oh, the these are bottles. the colors, really. Yes. Mm -hmm. So these mm -hmm. are the two bottles that mm -hmm. this necklace is made of. Mm -hmm. And when you look at this this containers you just think okay it's just trash mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> what type of material did you use for You're this talking about this mm -hmm, yes mm -hmm. so these are pieces made out of acrylics and um actually i got them from a friend of mine and they were some samples of acrylics from something mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh so what i did here was to carve 
the backing actually of this piece and then I set them in silver. Uh, so I have pendants and rings. Each of them is different because they are still by, you know, um, made by hand and carved by hand. So. Mm -hmm. And the, the one on the very bottom, uh, the dark Another area. recycled pl plastic, another recycled bottle. Mm -hmm. And um, this one is made out of um, another, I think, shampoo bottle or something. Mm -hmm. And sterling silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Javita, thank you so much for opening your studio doors to, to us and uh, telling us more about how you actually use recycled materials mm -hmm. in your forms of art. Thank you so much. Thank you, the pleasure was mine. Thanks.